Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got the tank review for the brand new Ultimate Season Pass tank, the T41E1. It's the M41 Walker Bulldog, but with the old school 10 shot autoloader that this tank had back then. But actually, it's better because it reloads quicker and it's got higher alpha. Initial impressions on this tank is, number one, the skin looks great. I like this Killer Bee skin a lot. I think you get it in the Ultimate Pass, maybe. I th yeah, I think you definitely do get it in the Ultimate Pass. It's a hell of a lot of fun. Ignore the gold marks because they buggered up MOEs. Yeah, it's a hell of a lot of fun. It's a great little tank. If you like the M41 tank or if you like any of the Bulldog variants, you will love this tank. If you know the weaknesses of the Bulldog with its gun against Tier 10s, then you will know what to expect from this tank with the 10-shot autoloader, to be honest. The autoloader on this tank with the 10 shots with 1,700 clip potential is insane. There's so many tanks that you clip out at your own tier. It is utterly incredible. It's, I don't know, it's got good mobility, good gun handling, like, insane clip potential. The reload's pretty damn good for 1,700 clip potential as well. Like I said, the mobility is good. His camo is not the best, but it is a bulldog, so the bulldogs tend to have not good camo in terms of light tanks with camo, right? But, it, you know, it's still not bad, and you can pump it up as well, which makes it even better. But on the whole, this tank is so is so worth it. I think this tank really is worth it, because it's just so ridiculous good. And for 6k gold on the ultimate pass as well, yeah, definitely. So without further ado, let's get into the tank. So, what's it got in terms of its stats? Well, its stats. It's got 800 horsepower engine with a 70 km to an hour top speed. With this 35 horsepower to ton ratio, 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 there you go, ratio, new, num new word there. Yeah, 35 horsepower per ton ratio. It means you get up to the 70 km an hour top speed incredibly easily. Obviously, you can put a traction system on and make this go at 77 if you wanted to. Sure, up to you. But yeah, the 70 km an hour top speed is rapid. It, it, it You know, you, you could obviously buff up the speed, but does it need it? Probably not. Just make everything else better. 20% fire chance means that, yeah, it does have quite a fire, quite a high fire chance and it can get set on fire a decent amount, so just be aware of that. It's got 1,100 hit points, which is, you know, around about what a light tank has. 54 degrees a second traverse speed on the hull is rapid as well. It turns very, very quickly. With 1.2 on soft terrain, 0.6 on medium terrain, and 0.5 on firm terrain. Which means that your ground resistances are also non-existent. Which means that you will easily hit the 70km an hour top speed. You're not really impact in terms of your track traverse. This tank is extremely manoeuvrable. So you've got 325 metres of still concealment as well. Which obviously on the move as well because you're a light tank. It's, it's pretty solid for a light tank. But you know it's, the Bulldog's fat right? Which means it's... F not got the best but it's better than most tanks still to be fair because it is a light tank so the concealment on this is nice and obviously if you buff it up with a camo net it gets even better you've got 410 meters view range which means your view range is insane which is lovely it means you're going to outspot most tanks you're going to face you're going to be able to get some great assistance with this tank with 410 meters view range that's delightful that is fantastic to have on a light tank and yeah you're going to get that in this tier 8 premium it's turret traverse is 50 degrees a second, which means if you look at the hull rotation speed, the turret doesn't quite keep up with the track traverse. So you might want to run rapid aim to make sure that your turret traverse keeps up with it. It's up to you. I'll Again, it's personal preference. I don't run it, but that again, it's completely up to you. Accuracy during rotation is 1.44, which it's not that bad, actually. It means your gun doesn't bloom that badly. You get 10 degrees of gun depression, which is fantastic as always. And here you go, 28.5 second reload, with a tw which is a 12.9 rate of fire, with a 10 shot auto loader, with a 0.36 accuracy, which, you know, you can get down quite easily, 3.6 isn't that bad, with a 1.8 second aim time, which means you're pretty much always aimed, it doesn't take long to aim it at all, this is incredible aim time. And with a two second intra clip, you actually aim in quicker than your intra clip as well, which means you pretty much mostly be aimed in for all your shots you can be taking with these 10 shots, which is fantastic. This 10 shot auto loader for 170 damage is insane. 1700 clip potential is nutty. And like I say, you can get all this down quite easily. You get 70 rounds, which means you get seven clips of ammo. I take 50 APCR and 20 heat in case I need it. And you do get APDS heat 
and HE, although you'll never take the HE because you just don't have the ammo capacity for it, essentially. Nearly 2.2k DPM. That's what you have, nearly 2.2k DPM. <laughs> that reload is insane, honestly. If you catch people out, and especially if you go and YOLO a light tank and you catch them out, you clip them out so easily, you probably take one, maybe two hits and you kill them. It's it's nuts. It's yeah, it's it's nuts. I I will say this tank is is very very nutty. So as you see, you got 175 pen with 210 heat pen, which I would say is probably the downside of the tank, if it has one, and that is its penetration because 175 is not enough to deal with a lot of tanks at tier 10. Obviously, a lot of the mediums, a lot of tank destroys you might do, but when it comes to the heavily armoured stuff, you're not going to pen them with 175 pen APCR at all. And if you get 210 heat pen, you really have to be shooting at the back end to be able to pen them even then. So the penetration is the letdown. You do have to be aware of the penetration, but you just have to flank and spank, essentially, is, is what you need to be doing. And you're going to be fine with that at tier 8 with you know doing typical light tank flanking, essentially. But that, like I said, that's probably the only downside of the tank. And at 500 meters, for some reason, I don't know if this is a bug, but the APDS is only 173 at a great distance. Usually APCR or APDS drops off a lot. So that's kind of random. I don't know if that's a bug or if it's been missed or what. Who knows? You've got 1219 shell velocity, which, yeah, 1219 meters a second shell velocity is, is great. That's fine for your APCR. 975 on the heat is decent it's not it's slower than the apds so you just got to be bear that in mind when you switch and make sure that you lead your targets a little bit more in terms of your silver bonus it's 150 110 on the tank bonus pretty standard yeah this tank is just great these stats on this tank make it so so nice actually to be honest i think it probably obsoletes the standard bulldog the tech tree bulldog probably gets obsoleted by this autoloader but then again, it depends on your playstyle. If you don't like auto loaders, then you won't like this tank. And you'll probably prefer the standard bulldog, right? It is one of those things. So, in terms of equipment on the bulldog, I was running a camo net to make my camo better. Again, make the gun handling great. You need to make it as good as possible to make sure you're going to be pitting all those 10 shots. And then optics, because I'm a light tank, I want to be outspotting everything. Especially since my camo isn't as good as other light tanks. So I want to be outspotting everything I possibly can. So I'm running optics. You could quite easily run vents though. And therefore, you know, you still probably get close to 500 meters anyway with the vents. If you really wanted to just forsake camo because, you know, you're a bulldog and you're fairly fat, you could drop the camo and put the traction system on it and you will get to 77 kilometers an hour, which is absolutely rapid. It's up to you. Again, play styles matter and it's completely how you want to play it. So let's put the consumables back on and then we'll I'll have a quick showing of the stats to you of what it's like when it's fully equipped. But first, we're going to go to the commander. So we're going to go over to here where I've stored it. We're going to put it into the T41E1. And yeah. So in terms of the commander, I have been running Bond Leader, Rapid Reload, Sixth Sense, Situational Awareness, Trap Mechanic, Steady Aim, Snapshot, not Snapshot, sorry, Run and Gun, Camouflage Expertise, and Muffled Shot. Again, this is a base crew. You can set it up to how you want. If you're not happy with the fact that the turret doesn't keep up with the tracks, you can switch out Muffled Shot and put on Rapid Aim. You could, if you decide, you know what, I'm in a light tank. I'm just going to risk it. Don't want to run trap mechanic. Again, you could put stuff like... You could drop that and put rapid aim on. Or you could put snapshot on to help the gun even more while on turret rotation. Which is going to be happening while you're on the move running and gunning, right? You could put firefighting on because of the high percentage chance of fire. There's so much you could do, right? It's all down to you. That's just the crew that I run. They're just options, essentially. And, yeah, that's the crew I run. In terms of what this tank is like when you look at it with all the fully you know fully pimped out essentially yeah here you go you've got 272 meters still concealment down to there which is pretty damn diddly decent that's really good a lot of tanks may struggle to spot you if you run it right 525 meters view range is insane that means you are really going to outspot everything you're going to devalue lots of tanks as camo which is wonderful and you know you can spot them and get lots of nice assistance which is great 
You go up to 2.4k DPM with that. You get to 23.62 second reload. Now, obviously, that can get lower with vents if you don't run vents. In, or, sorry, if you run vents instead of optics, that will get lower. You got 0.23 accuracy. Well, like I say, it knocks it down so, so much to have vert stabs and have steady aim. And that accuracy is insanely good. 1.66 aim time. Like I say, you are well aimed in very, very easily. This tank is utterly fantastic. <laughs> that that That's personally what I think of it. I, I truly, really enjoy this. This is a, definitely a light tank enjoyer's tank. If you don't like light tanks, obviously, like I say, you are not going to like this tank because... Yeah, light tanks. But if you know, like I say, if you know how to play the M41 Bulldog, the Tech Tree Bulldog, and you know how to sort of make the most of the weaknesses of the 175 pen and 210 heat pen, you will absolutely love this tank. This tank is fantastic. And to be honest, for 6k gold on the Ultimate Pass, being an Ultimate Pass tank, this tank is so worth it because 6k gold is great. That's probably it's essentially buying this tank for 4,000 gold, which is a big discount on it, essentially. So yeah, that's the T41E1. It's a great tank. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to send you into the replays where you can watch that, watch it in action and make, you, make the most of it, essentially. It's a lot of fun. I've really enjoyed playing it. So as always, everybody, enjoy the replays. So here we are in the first of three replays in the T41E1. And this one, we're bottom tier. This was actually one of the only games I could get that was bottom tier. It's one of those random times where... I think it's because there were so many people buying and playing this tank that there was a lot of tier 8 games going and great, going around. So this was the only one top, bottom tier, I should say. And actually, this was probably more of one of the only average games that I had in it because... I just seem to be having lots of good games with it because it was literally just catch people out, laugh at them, and clip them out. And that's what it's been like. And you're probably going to see a little bit of that in the next two replays. To be honest, you're probably going to see sort of a follow-up video for this tank either tomorrow in, or in the coming days because, like I said, I, I had a lot of good games in this tank and I had a lot of good fun playing it. And I'm probably going to keep playing it for a little while because it is a lot of fun. I say it does have the problem that it is a bulldog so it is kind of fat so if people want to shoot at you like is happening right now generally they will hit you and just laugh at you because yeah you're a, you're a big bull you're a big boy you're a very very big boy and big bulldog you know gets hit quite easily but let's say just use your camo skirt and spot so in this game so far all four of their light tanks are dead already because number one we spotted two of their light tanks coming into the field doing exactly what i was doing but I had a gun line, so both of those guys died, game over. As you can see, I'm now sitting in a bush, spotting the machine. And I'm thinking, does anyone have a shot at this guy? And yes, as you see in here, as he starts to get hit, he does. I say I'm the one lighting him up. And there is a light tank in the middle that's actually taking some of the spotting. So it's like, you know what? I'm not getting all of the spotting. And I have I do have 2.2 cases so far, which is nice. So we're going to get way outside the range this guy could possibly light me up. And then we're just going to start auto loading. And obviously it is a machine, so the 30B hull of side armor of like, what is it, 30 millimeters is not very good. So we can easily pen that guy. But unfortunately he's wised up to where I am. So it's like, okay, if you've wised up to where I am and what I'm doing, I can't pen you when you're like that anymore. I give up with you, sir. I'm going to go try and get around the side and see if there's anything else in this field or if there's anything else knocking around here that I can spot up. And as we come over, we end up spotting this TD on the left, which is an iron rain. Like I say, this is where the camo is nice because the iron rain didn't see us until now. And we outspotted him way, way before. And that's what I'm saying about having the ability to knock down people's camo, which is great. So we're going to drop one into the iron rain there, but we pull back behind cover because, well... I don't want to get shot by that Kanona and Jagdpanzer. Unfortunately, we missed the shot on the Fosh. And then we start shooting this FV215B. But he turns and looks at us. And I'm like, can I, can I stop being spotted now, please? Clearly, he was still spotting me while I was firing at him. So I have to wait as long as possible to get unspotted. Fortunately enough, the Kanona and Jagdpanzer 105 misses. And now I am unspotted. And I'm looking at this going, right, can I fire at this guy and not get spotted from here? I assume so. I'm going to use this concrete pillar in front of us to, or pillbox, to stay unspotted. But unfortunately, because of the gaps in that pillbox, and I'm not quite thinking of this at the time, I'm seeing this in hindsight, the gaps in that pillbox is actually giving the Kanonian Jagdpanzer 
in his camouflage position, a good position to actually spot me when I fire, which is really frustrating because right now I could have been farming that FV215B and getting a fair amount of damage on him, which would have been nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and skirt around the one line and get into another position again to be able to get shots at this FV215B and try and not get spotted by this Iron Rain. Now, realistically, I should probably, in, in hindsight, yet again, I should probably actually try and take out this Iron Rain before trying to get some cheeky shots into the FV215B because that way, well, he's probably the one that's actually spotting me, which is, yeah, going to make it a little bit awkward. So we get the FV215B into render range, and I start unloading into his back end. I thought I was far enough away that I wasn't going to get spotted by the Iron Rain or anything like that, but I was wrong, and unfortunately, while I was unloading that guy, I was spinning around to try and get away, but you know, he just... RBRT is and shuts us down because it's not that hard to hit this tank, unfortunately. Officially, the third, the third class, the 778 basics, PL loss, 1700 damage and 3.4k assistance, which is, you know, a nice total in a tier 10 battle. Could have been better. That was definitely one of the more average games I've had, but for the most part, a lot of the games I've played have all been like this or the next one. <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you, they, they, they all have in the 10 or 15 games I've played before I had to stop playing. Yeah, and if you did see, yeah. I did get the fourth mark of excellence in that tank, but I actually got it in this game. And this was the very first game I played in the tank. This is literally the first game that I played. And I got the fourth mark of excellence. It's because the marks, for some reason, they buggered it up somehow on update. So when these games are played on release of the patch, for some reason, the marks of excellence went from, you know, going off of your cumulative average over so many games to just basically if you achieve the requirements that it would take to mark a tank in one game it just gives to you that mark so if you hit the 100% requirement you'll 100% it if you hit the 95% requirement you'll get three marks two 85% two marks etc etc and that's the way it works and that's the way I figured it out to work because in the FE 4005 I played a game in that ended up getting one bombed by Artie because, well, it's a 4,005. Did 1,700 damage, so I dropped to 50%. But the very next game, I ended up doing 6.6k and got 100%. So, yeah. They screwed up marks like idiots. But it, it, it is what it is. So, it, without further ado, the T41E1. We're, we're not even going to go into that. It's, it's all about the bulldog. That's what this video is. It's, it's the big bulldog. And you saw what it's like to get faced by another T41E1 in the start of this battle. Because he YOLO'd in... And he took most of my hit points. That's probably going to be a problem with this tank running around and lots of them. Is that if you get caught out by one of these things and they focus you, they're going to pretty much take most of your health. Especially if you're lightly armoured. If you're heavily armoured, you're not going to have to worry about it as much because you can do something to counter it by just angling. Whereas you're facing something lightly armoured, I'm going to take something like a CDC or an M51 Super Sherman. Yeah, because you're going to get the Super Sherman in the Season Pass. The Super Sherman, which a lot of people are going to be getting... If you get yolo by one of these things, it's not going to be a good time because it's just going to farm you and clip you out really easily. And that's what that guy did to me. He YOLO'd into the middle with me. Well, I say YOLO'd into the middle. He, he, he tried to take the middle with like the same as I did. And he ended up getting most of his health taken, same as he took most of my health. It's just that I had friends. That's why I, I won and he had to get out. So now we have won the middle, we can use this position that is really, really solid position on Pearl River to start working out the shells in this clip. So now we've cut out this Tiger Shark who hasn't quite been able to deal with us. And we've got a fair few shots into that guy, which is nice. We're now going to hit the reload and make sure that we've got a full clip in for the next engagement we want to be facing. So while we're moving over here... We're just going to try and spot anything that's in there, Sniper Hill, or anything that was along the three line, essentially, that was up there. So hopefully my snipers that are in E1 and 2 could shoot them and shut them down, which is what happened with the Sturm... Sorry, the Sturm Panzer, sorry. The Sturm Mill shut down the Sturm Panzer just because we lit him up, which was nice. Now this ISM is caught out. It's like, hello, ISM. Are you going to look at me? No? Okay, I'll just start pumping the shots in then. And, you know, people don't react, I think, to this tank that much because... Obviously, I am hitting them for not that much, but then it slowly but surely starts to build up, and, you know, before that ISM knew it, he was gone. <laughs> the clip potential on this tank is insane, and if you do isolate someone and start to pump the shots in, you pen all your shots, you are going to laugh at them, and they're just going to not be able to stand up to it at all. So currently they are capping, we're reloading, and it's like, okay, I want to get this Tiger Shark out of the game. 
we get one into his tracks, which doesn't pen him because it misses somehow. And we're going to move into another position to see if we can get another shot in. But unfortunately, we don't get the shot into him. But Udez 03 does. So now that guy's gone, it's like, right, we're going to move in and we're going to see if there's anything else lurking over here. We spot the T41E1 on the left. A T20 that I think we caught a glimpse of, maybe. Or possibly the G2 tank destroyer spotted him as well. Just looking for a shot at the T41E1. We can't quite see it. So it's like, okay, you know what? I'm going to change it up. And I'm going to go after this medium tank. But in fact, this medium tank is coming after us. Fortunately enough, he bounces off of us. But to be honest, I'm not quite... He must have got very lucky to hit us there underneath the destructible cover while it was dropping off a cliff. But we managed to get a few shots into him. And as we're chasing after him, it's like, oh, there's a bear. Hello, sir. I'm just going to put my clip into you. The rest of it. There we go. Now we're out of rounds. It's like, well, sorry, Mr. Turtless TD. I'm just going to run away now. You're not going to be able to deal with me. Then we spot the other Turtless TD that's in the middle of the stone, Tiger P. And it's like, oh, please, don't hit me with your big gun. Don't do it. Thankfully, it misses. And then he gets shut down himself. It was going to be very difficult for that guy to hit me because it does have a big gun. It's a very derpy gun. And, yeah, I kind of got lucky. But now this bear is getting shot by the other light tank. I figure, you know what? Possibly... He's facing the other way, which he is. So we're just going to pump the shots. And this, like I said, the 170 damage is nice as well because you're generally rolling from 160 to 180, which is cool. And yeah, we managed to shut down the Bayer. We've finished that game with 4.2k damage, the victory, two kills, two and a half k assistance, ace tanker, high caliber, and like I said, the 100% MOE because lol. And yeah, we finished with 2k base XP. A really, really nice game for the T41E1. I say, a lot of the games I've been playing have been exactly like that game. Where it's just sort of go around, find people, catch them out, slap shots in, and have a good time. And also get a decent amount of assistance, which we've got 2.5k assistance, which is you know pretty decent for a light tank. I mean, that's what, 6.7k combined? That was a very nice first game into this tank. It was a very good introduction. And it was in a tier 9 game. And now we're on to the second, or so, second game, the third game, the third and last game of this video. We're on Vineyards, and I decided, you know what, it's, it's Vineyards Encounter, the cap's at H6. I'm not going to go towards the cap, because from this side, that JK line isn't that nice to fight on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go try and attack the A line, through the A line, and then you can go down the 9-0. But because I'm a light tank, I'm going to push into an, uh, an aggressive way of going into the A-line by going up on top of this mound. And by doing that, I can possibly spot and shoot everything that's over there. And as you see, with the gun handling on this tank, this gun handling is very, very nice. We managed to hit that Barask twice on the move. And we're up to 506 damage with the opening clip. We fired the first five shots of our game. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop up on top of this ridgeline, see if we can spot anything else other than what's already been spotted. But they were looking at us, so it's like, no, you know what, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna take any hits this early. I'm just gonna pop the reload. And you know, because this reload isn't actually that it really doesn't feel that long at all. So for reloading ten shots, I'm not that fussed. So it's like, you know what, I'll just pop the reload at any given chance so that I can have a full clip. And when I finally get to go in on someone, I can just absolutely assassinate them. Because that's the name of the game for the tank. It is assassination. It's an assassinating god. And, you know, when you start pumping shots in, you, you really start to make it count. And, like I said, people don't react to you until it's too late because of how much, or how, sort of say, how low your alpha damage is. So now we're moving in on this CS-53. Again, the tank that's not got the best armor in the universe, so I'm not that worried about not penning him. Now he's gone. It's like, well, hello, Mr. SU-101. I'm just going to go after you. We get one into him, two. We're going to get three. And it's like, well, I don't quite get to finish him off because the other T-41E1 gets him. Now, there is the T-54E2 over there. I only had, like, what, one shell left in the clip, so I decided I want to reload this clip again. I want to make sure I've got a full clip in, in here so that I can go and get rid of whatever is in front of us and, again, you know, be able to clip them out if I isolate them, which is a strength of the tank. So this T-54E2 is over here. We are lighting him up a little bit, so hopefully get a little bit of assistance on him, maybe. But now we're loaded. We pump two shots in, shut him down. And now there's this G-Saw. Fortunately enough, the G-Saw misses. And we see him fire again. And it's like, well, okay, Mr. G-Saw. Let's try and pen you. Unfortunately, we bounce off his upper plate. But he only has to unangle a little bit, and it's really easy pickings. And this is where this tank, like I say, is very, very strong. You catch someone out. 
they are going to absolutely regret it. And we managed to pump most of our shots in and take a lot of his hit points. We're up to 2.7k damage so far. And we're just going to pull back and wait for our reload to go in before we go and YOLO the JK and try and spot and find whatever is camping at J9. Because well, it's vineyards. A lot of people do camp at J9 on vineyards. So now is the chance. Now we're nearly reloaded. It's like, right, let's go see what we can spot. We have amazing view range. We're going to destroy people's camos and therefore, you know, spot them up and hopefully get a bit of assistance. We end up spotting the Yag Panther. And it's like, hello, Mr. Yag Panther. Just let me pump all of my shells into you and you're dead. There we go. We're up 3.2k damage. And it's like, again, let's reload. Get a full clip in. Again, if we isolate something, we're going to have a lot of fun time there's still four tanks left there's only one place that can be which is pretty much in front of us there's the two tanks there and then another heavy tank and something else which is currently spotting me and i'm like what is it it's actually a vanguard elc even 90 that's just that thing's camera is ridiculous but i decide you know what i want to yolo this amx 7445 because i want to actually demonstrate just how lethal this clip is so I'm just going to ignore this ELC even 90 because, again, he only has a certain amount of, in his clip. He wasn't going to kill me. We got in, destroyed the AMX M445, and this ELC even 90 is on the run. So I decided, you know what? Screw the ELC even 90. Can I get shots at this Dragon? No, but this Tiger 2 is sideways on. He's down here. So let's start getting some shots into this guy and hopefully get the final shells of my clip in. And he's getting swarmed as well, so he ends up getting shot down. It's like... Okay, I've got one shell left, but this Vanguard has ended up getting stopped just above me, so there's no point reloading. And unfortunately, we can't quite get there to get another shell in. But we finished the game with a very good total for a tier 8 light tank. We finished with the victory. Two kills, 4.7k damage, nearly 776 assistance. Ace tanker, the Confederate, the high caliber. 1819 base XP. A really nice game for the T41 and E1. A tank that I do think is thoroughly worth it, because I think this tank is crazily good it's probably going to be a bit of a pest in the coming days weeks even because it will just yellow you and dump its clip let's be real but it is a good tank and well worth the 6k gold so as always everybody thank you very much for watching i'll see you next time